Well guys, it is exciting times on the homestead. We have finally got our act together and we've made bean sprouts. Yay! We started doing this last year and then just kind of slipped off the thing, didn't really worry about it. Then we grew mung beans this year in the garden and said we were gonna eat a lot more bean sprouts and it just never happened. So of course the pantry challenge got us thinking about what we can use that we already have, etc., etc., And this is what we've come up with. So tonight, we are making chow mein, which is super exciting. We all enjoy chow mein. So we're gonna start off with our veggies. We're gonna put a bit of oil in the pan, get that hot. Then we're gonna add our onions and cabbage and our garlic, get that nice and browned. And then we're gonna chuck in our carrots. We've actually put in rutabaga as well and squash just because we had those items. And then right at the end is our meat and our bean sprouts. So stay tuned as we get going through this and then we'll go through the sauce. Starting to look pretty good. It's time to add the garlic. One. So we're basically putting in three cloves of garlic. All right, so now we're going to add our carrots and our rutabaga. I know, rutabaga, that's something very weird to be in chow mein, but we're working with what we got and we have food that is starting to kind of spoil, so it needs to be eaten up. All right, so we put the lid on the wok to let those steam a bit. I put a little bit of chicken broth in the bottom, and now we're gonna make our sauce while that is starting to cook. So we're starting off with a half cup of chicken broth, and now we're gonna add everything else. So we're starting one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon cornstarch, three tablespoons of soy sauce, three tablespoons of sesame oil. And at this point, you would add six tablespoons of oyster sauce. Now we don't have oyster sauce. Oyster sauce is a problem for us because we find it very hard here to actually find and purchase good quality oyster sauce, oyster sauce that doesn't have MSG and stuff added to it. So what we're going to be using instead is three tablespoons of fish sauce and three tablespoons of hosin sauce because we have been able to find very good quality hosin sauce. So that's how we make our sauce for our chow mein. Woo, look at that. All right, so we kind of skipped ahead on a few steps. We did add the squash and we added our rabbit meat. So we are now ready for our sauce and bean sprouts and noodles. Give this a little turn, it's looking fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna put the sauce in before I put the bean sprouts in. Our bean sprouts, we did let them go a little bit long. They do have some leaves, but we taste tested them. They're still fantastic. There we go, we're gonna put in three of these little kind of pucks of our chow mein noodles. And see if I can turn it to get them down into the liquid with the bean sprouts. We're gonna pop the lid back on and let that, whoops, making a mess. We're gonna let that simmer for about two minutes and then we're going to eat. Apparently somebody else is ready for dinner. Are you hungry, Abby? Well, we're eating out of a bowl again. We seem to eat out of bowls a lot, but I find it really controls our portions, which is awesome. It looks delicious. I'm gonna give it a taste test, although it does seem a little bit warm. The bean sprouts cooked amazingly. I will admit, I burnt it a little bit on the bottom, but that's okay. Mmm, very good. Passes inspection for sure. That's really good. I like it. I like it. We are out to the freezer in the big bad shed and uh, getting some ground lamb in order to make lamb burgers for tonight's supper. And it occurred to me that this is the perfect time to admit to you that I am not winning the battle with this freezer challenge. And I'm gonna show you why. Well, we are back filled up guys. We got, we got delivery of two more lambs which luckily I had enough space to fit them into this freezer, sort of. Needless to say, I don't think we're going down to three freezers, but we're still gonna try our best to get one emptied before next gardening season. How's that for a plan? So 
for now, we're gonna at least take two packs of ground meat out of here. Well, tonight for dinner, we are trying to use a few things out of the freezer because right now, more so than the pantry, the freezer is what is giving us an issue. So we have our two packets of lamb meat, which I'm going to make into burgers. And we took out, now this is an oldie. I mean, this has gotta be four years old. We took out a pack of our homemade uh, chevred kind of cheese, which we're gonna make cloud bread to be buns for these burgers. And along with that, we're doing twice baked potatoes. So super excited for those. I love those all the time. And uh, it uses up some of those russet potatoes we have downstairs. So we're gonna get busy with this and uh, bring you back when it is time to see how it all looks. Look at these beauties mastered the cloud bread this time i think and james is working away on our burgers making a masterpiece i'm sure they're going to be amazing although was that just hot chilies crushed chilies that's a lot of hot chilies my dear oh crap uh, crab 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 oh boy spicy them's gonna be some spicy burgers and Alex is working on our twice baked potatoes. The only video I fail on. <laughs> That's okay, it'll still taste good. All right, dinner is served. We also added some of our uh, pickled roasted peppers onto these burgers. A little bit of cabbage, because we have a head of cabbage that's from back in December that we're slowly working our way through. And look at these twice baked potatoes. That's pretty sweet. Alex did an amazing job. James did awesome on the burgers. Everything, to be honest, is fantastic. So it's time for us to enjoy. I'm going to show you what we're having for breakfast. I made apple crisp using applesauce and oats and things from the pantry. So it was a nice, easy thing to just make and chuck in the oven. And now we're gonna have it with some coffee. Well, we've been pretty quiet. We haven't done a whole lot of cooking as we started on this week, but we're making smoothies today. And in them, we're actually going to try putting something that we're growing right now. Well, today we're making some smoothies. So we're growing wheatgrass for the livestock, but this is also edible by us. So we're gonna harvest a little bit here to put in the smoothie. But in the future, who knows, we might uh, try to up this even more. None of us really know how much we should put into a smoothie. Well, we'll start with this. It's not very much, but... Uh, it looks like a decent enough handful for our first time trying wheatgrass. All right, well, we are well into February now. We're well into week two, and we're kind of throwing together a last-minute meal here. It's honestly getting a little tough on my brain <laughs> trying to come up with ways to use stuff that doesn't use anything out of the store-bought pantry. It really is quite tricky, and we had this same problem last year. But basically what I've been doing is I've been flipping through my cookbooks. This is a perfect time to kind of get creative, look at those recipes and try and tweak it to use what we have. And basically, this will sound really, really ridiculous. I found this great recipe for venison pie. <laughs> and here it comes. So I am going to be making this with chicken ala king that we can this year some extra rabbit meat added to it because I do think when I'm making a big kind of casserole dish, my uh, my two pints of the chicken ala king aren't gonna be substantial enough to really make a good meal. So we're gonna add some meat to that. We also have some leftover beetroot that we had last night for supper, which I'm going to chop up and throw in there with a couple carrots and uh, see how that goes. And then basically the topping on this, this is the part that got me. The topping on this is actually mashed parsnips, rutabaga, and sweet potatoes. And I thought, that's fantastic. Unfortunately, I really don't have any of those things. <laughs> so I am still trying the recipe, but we're tweaking it. So I'm going to do potatoes, our Canada Crookneck squash, and the rutabagas, because our rutabagas are starting to go soft and we're really trying to come up with some unique ways to use up what we've got before they spoil. So hopefully that will work. And the interesting tweak to this, besides butter in those boiled vegetables, the other thing that's in there is horseradish. Now, I know this should be added to the list, but I'm gonna let you in on a secret. This has been in the fridge for at least two years. And I'm almost embarrassed to say this, it expired July, 2022. <laughs> So I'm not counting it in our budget because basically it's garbage. 
<laughs> so we're gonna put some in here and we're gonna try this with our root vegetable mash top and then it's gonna be baked in the oven and hopefully it's gonna come out absolutely fantastic and everybody loves it. So stay tuned at the end, we're gonna give it a try and let you know what we think of my kind of very ad-libbed concoction. Well, we're just getting the last couple potatoes in here to boil. This is gonna boil for a bit and then we're gonna mash these up and put them on top of this and some other good stuff. All right, we have some beets and our rabbit meat layered in the bottom. And we're about to put on the uh, chicken ala king from the cans. And here we go. So we'll put this on, get it spread around, and then our topping will go on next. Got one more can to put in, in can number two. It's very different from the recipe, but it should be very good. Oh, we just need our topping. All right, so we got a couple tablespoons of butter in there, tablespoon of horseradish, and basically it's pretty simple. We're just going to mash it all in, mash it up, same way you would potatoes, and then we're going to put it onto our. Basically, it's kind of like chicken pot pie, and we're going to bake this in the oven. It smells really good. I know you can't smell it, but it does smell really good. Didn't look like it was going to be enough in the pot, but I think it's going to make it. Look at that. Woo. It's funny because I think the uh, beets that we threw into the uh, uh, chicken mixture at the bottom made everything go kind of pinky red. But I'm excited to try it. All right, moment of truth. How does my concoction stand up? Seems like it might be a little warm. Actually, it's pretty good. The the root vegetables, well, they weren't actually root vegetables, all of them, but all mixed together are actually quite good. That little bit of horseradish didn't overpower it. Yeah, I'm giving this a thumbs up. Maybe we'll make it again. Hopefully I can figure out how I did it. So today is Pancake Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, and of course we're having pancakes. But before I show you and tell you about that meal, I'm going to tell you about last night's supper because we filmed some footage, but I didn't really do much talking because it was kind of rushed. But we had a wonderful curry butter chicken. And you see here again, we use those sprouts that we sprouted over the week. We're getting really good at this and I'm hoping to kind of keep consistent with this and get it where we kind of eat them twice a week. So stay tuned to see how that goes because it works great and we grew the mung beans, so we might as well use them. All right, so this smells really good and used up a bunch of stuff that's a little different. I'm going to give it a taste test. It tastes as good as it smells. The uh, sour cream doesn't make it thick like the uh, coconut milk, but it gives her coconut, uh, you know, coconut milk, but it gives it a really good flavor. Really, the big thing here is we made pancakes today completely with, well, basically completely with our own products. Chris ground up our millet, sorghum, curl dock, and a little bit of our actual wheat for the chickens. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, just to uh, try out the uh, grinder and try all different things through it. And it worked amazing. Look at these pancakes. Look at those pancakes. They cooked up so beautifully. Aren't they wonderful? A little dark. That's that uh, curl dock that I was talking about. It's a very, very dark seed. But we're now going to enjoy these with some of our fruit sauce from our berries that we picked over last year and put in the freezer. So all in all, this meal was pretty much prepared completely with no store-bought. Now, I will put in one clause, though. Instead of butter, I used oil. And instead of using all the milk that the recipe requires, I used water mixed with the milk to make the milk go a little bit further because we are going to be pretty tight on our $150 budget. But we're going to enjoy these Shrove Tuesday pancakes. Well, pancakes for breakfast and now we're having our Valentine's dinner tonight because we don't actually have the kids with us for Valentine's Day itself. So we're going a day early and we're having lamb chops. Super excited. I don't know if the kids are super excited because I think I said this in a previous video, but they're not huge fans of having to cut their meat off the bone. None of us really are. That's why we really don't get lamb chops anymore. But through the pantry challenge, 
through this February, we are trying to use these chops up out of the freezer because we have quite a few still and they're old. Well, at least three or four years old anyways. So we're having our lamb chops for dinner with those same potato mashed up with the squash and the, um, what are those called? Rutabagas. Rutabagas with uh, horseradish in it that we had earlier. They, it was so good. We've decided we're going to do that again with this meal. And then we're going to fry up some of our Detroit red beets from the garden and also noodle beans, which I took out of the freezer. So again, all in all, we are going through this and basically using everything that we grew, which is fantastic. And there's dinner. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, wait, I forgot my mint sauce. I forgot my mint sauce. Wait. Wait, I need to borrow your fork because I forgot. Homemade mint jalapeno sauce and yummy lamb chops. Let's try it. Almost makes me want to start getting lamb chops again from the butcher. Time to eat. Well, guys, we have made it to the midway point of February. $50 February, that is. And we're cutting it close already. But the one thing I want to touch on here at the end of this uh, first two weeks is we still have a lot of that initial budgeted product left. And that I think is going to be key as we get to the end. So right now, I'm going to tell you where we're at in the numbers. So we are at 145.08. I know, and it's only the 15th of February. But what I wanted to mention was we added brown sugar, which you saw in the video. I'd completely forgot about that. A pack of chow mein noodles, which we still have half of it left to use for another meal, which is wonderful because you've seen us using those bean sprouts. I realized at the beginning I hadn't actually budgeted the nachos into the numbers, so I still want to keep them. We haven't opened them yet, and we might not, but they're in the budget now. And butter. I really thought we wouldn't have used more than one block of butter, but we did. So we're on to our second block of butter already. So that was quite an eye opener for me and something that maybe we need to work on. The other thing that you've seen us using throughout this video is a lot of bits and bobs. You know, soy sauce, hose-in sauce, lemon juice, things like that. A little bit of sugar here and there. And those ones are things that they're already open, they're already on the table, they're already in the shelves. And it's really hard to calculate out just how much we're using of that. So my plan is at the end to just kind of do a guesstimate a ballpark figure or lump sum at the end of the month of what I think we actually used. There's really only been those kind of four items so far that you saw in the chow mein and then the lemon juice. Uh, we don't count salt, pepper, and baking powder, and those things are uh, freebie items, which is wonderful. As we're showing you over the table here about what is still left to be consumed uh, for the month of February, you can see there's a lot of product left. We've budgeted in a whole bag of rice and we've only used two cups of it so far. We budgeted a whole container of maple syrup and we still have lots left. Two blocks of cheese and we've barely gotten through half of the first one. So I'm curious to see when it comes to calculating out what we actually used and the real final numbers at the end, if we actually do go over budget. Uh, that's something that I think is going to be interesting and because all these packages have weights, our plan is to basically weigh it at the end and then figure out what percentage of the bag was consumed and price it accordingly. So you'll definitely have to stay tuned for that and see how we do. I'm going to run it the same way. We did a halfway point and we're going to have another video for $50 February come out at the end of the month and basically kind of reveal how we ate for the next two weeks and how we did in a final budget.